Okay, so as I mentioned to you at the outset, right, right here in my copy paste file, you see I note that, yeah, the tutorial method works, but the filter and sort don't work together, right? Uh, kind of seems to assume that filter should be cleared when you resort the data and vice versa. But I have kind of a, <clears throat> a better method, maybe? I don't know. You can tell me what you think when you're done. So what we're going to do is we're going to add three parameters, right? So I'm just going to follow along with these instructions. You can do the same because you have a copy of them as well. So three new parameters to the actual index action. Boy, we're getting more and more of them here, right? So maybe I'll just press, I'll do a comma, press enter to come down, and then add my three new uh, parameters, right? So one will be the action button as a string, sort direction, but I'm going to set a default. So on the first request for the page, I'm saying this is going to be the default order or sort direction is ascending. But what field are we sorting on, right? Well, the default again is going to be just patient, okay? Now, one thing about this approach is the names that I actually use, the uh, captions above the columns, I can't let them change because in code, I'm going to look for specific values. So we're going to hard code and decide what those values are going to be, right? As opposed to using a display name, which could possibly change in a different spot in code. Okay, so my assumption is we're going to be in ascending order by the patient name, right? So those are my parameters there. Okay, and patient is the default field for our sorting as well. All right. So we already have our form. So the uh, instructions here tell me to make sure I have a form, okay? And that's good. But it also says I have to make sure that the entire HTML table is inside the form, and it's not. So let's come over here. Remember, my form ended here, right? But for my techniques that I'm going to show you to work, we want the whole table to be included as well. Because instead of having links, okay, turning these actually into uh, links, for the column headings, I'm going to have them as buttons, right? So for the buttons to submit the form, I have to have it inside the form. So I'm going to cut, control X, the closing form tag, come right down to the bottom after the table and paste in the form tag there. There we go. And see, it did some nice reformatting for me already, right? I could take out some of that white space. Okay. All right. So now everything is included in the form. Very important. Uh, you know, students, if you're doing this and following along, it's a common thing when students uh, have trouble that they forgot to move the form tag to the end. All right. So what I'm going to do instead of his approach of creating links to go here is I'm going to turn each of these column headings into a button, right? Now, a typical column heading will look basically like this. Okay, let me just grab my code or the copy paste file. So this is where the patient, right? Remember the display name for this is just patient. So it'll be an input type is submit. Okay. And then the value is the text that appears on it. And this is what I want to have full control of. So patient. All right. And this makes it look like a link, even though it's a button. Okay. Now, the other key thing I'm doing here, you notice that the name is action button, right? And that's also the same name as I gave to the button in my submit for the filter as well. The value is filter, right? The value here is patient. So if you think right back to how HTML forms work, whether it's a post or a get, it's the same idea. A name value pair, even for the submit button, gets passed in if you supply both a name and a value. The advantage is if you use a common name for a whole bunch of different buttons on the same form, then all you have to do is look at the value that corresponds to the name, in my case, action button, and I will know, I will be certain in code, which button was clicked. Did they click the filter button or did they click the patient button? And I can respond appropriately. So that's the little trick that I'm pulling here, right? By using buttons, I can know which one was clicked without having to manufacture these funny links to have inside each one. Plus, this way it's all a matter of just posting name value pairs in the form, and that way I can maintain this without uh, the filtering and the sorting clobbering each other. So this one is for age. Now, we can't really sort by patient conditions, right? Because it itself is a collection. So what we typically do in a case like that is we want it to look similar, right? 
we want it to look similar, but we should give a clue that it's really not something we can sort by. So I typically will put this disabled equals disabled, right? And that way it looks like a link that's grayed out or, or disabled. And that way, you know, people know they can't click on it to resort that column. But otherwise it matches pretty much the look and feel of the other ones. Okay. So uh, we're going to sort by our in trial. I'm going to leave that one for now, but we can sort by the doctor name. Right, so let me do that. So if I'm going to sort by the doctor, then the value would be just doctor. All right. So I have patient, age, and doctor. Those are all names of different action buttons as well as filter. Okay. So those are my four possible names that I might have for action button. If I'm here, if I get to the controller from clicking a submit button inside the form. Okay, that's the whole idea, right? <clears throat> Pardon me. So if the action button comes in and it says filter, well, then I know I don't need to change any sorting. I just need to apply a filter, right? If it comes through and it's not filter, then it means that if, but I, there's something in action button, then I know it's going to be a command, basically or a request to change the sort order by one of the different columns. Okay, now one other thing we have to do before I leave the view is we do need to have the view remember what the last sort order was so that we can maintain that going back and forth in our round trips. So that's usually done with hidden inputs, right? Just as we have used these in HTML before. And so I'll just show in a couple of input type is hidden, okay? One for sort direction and one for sort field, right? Remember, of course, you notice that those were also parameters, sort direction and sort field that we created up here, right? So basically, we're going to put code in as well to make sure whatever values we last had, we store in the page here. So when the data comes back in, we can compare. Oh, what were you sorting by last time? What was your sort direction last time? And then uh, respond appropriately. All right. So that's it for the view. We're done with our changes here. So coming back to the controller, what do we have to do? Well, I've added my new parameters, right? I have my conditions and everything else here. That's fine. My uh, link query, all my filtering is good because usually you always do filtering before ordering, just as you would with an SQL command, right? The where clause always comes before the order by clause. And it's basically the same idea here. So we've done all of our filtering, okay? But now we're going to decide what about sorting, right? So I'm going to put a little if structure in and we'll just talk about it first. Okay, so before we sort, we want to see if we've called for a change of filtering or sorting, right? So basically, we check that action button name value pair that came in with the request. Now, if this was an initial request or just a get request with no parameters, right, then, hey, you know, obviously, there's nothing to change. Our default sort order is going to be fine, right? But if we've clicked the action button or any of the submit buttons, any of the four of them that we have right now, then this will not be empty, right? So then our next decision is, okay, well, the form was submitted, so let's do some sorting. So we check if it's just filter, well, then change of sort isn't requested. We'll just let the filtering happen that's already been defined, right? And that's it. We're done. Our job is done. We skip over the rest here. And whatever the last, okay, sort order was, because remember we stored it in here, it will come in at those parameters and that's what will be used further on, right? So we won't change anything. But if it wasn't filter, okay, if the action button doesn't match filter, then they must have clicked, let me come back here, one of these other, okay, oh, okay, one of these other buttons, patient, okay, age, or doctor, right? That's why we're here. They clicked a button, but I don't know which one. So what I'll do is, hey, remember, I have the sort field that was last okay, used. So if the action button matches, what they've done is they've clicked on the same column heading that we were already sorting by. So that usually in user interface, uh, in UI design means they want to reverse the order, right? Usually you click the column heading to sort in ascending order. You click it again to switch to descending and back and forth. So if the sort field matches the action button, they clicked on the same one we have already been sorting by, then I'm just going to reverse direction. So I take whatever my sort direction is. If it's ascending, I switch it to descending. 
and vice versa. If it's not ascending, then I set it to ascending, right? Because there's only two different sort directions. And then finally, I store whatever action button was clicked, the name of it, or the value, as my new sort field. And that's it. Now I've decided, okay, whether maybe we aren't changing anything because we just filtered, but if we are changing, then either we're reversing the order or maybe even uh, choosing a different field or column to sort by. All right, so that does all the work. And by the time we reach here, we know what we want to sort by. All right, so I'll just put in my uh, if structure and we'll talk a bit about it. Now, remember, we always are going to have a default sort with this approach, right? Our default sort was patient. So what we do is now we know which field and direction. So I check is the sort field age. Okay. If it's ascending, then I just write my order by descending. Because remember, really ascending <laughs> uh, means that uh, a, if the age is ascending, then the date of birth is descending. Right. It's a bit of reverse logic there, but there you go. And then, of course, else on the uh, sort direction, because we can't just sit quickly uh, say pass a parameter. So I actually have to use either the command order by descending or just order by, right? Else, okay, because we're only sort by one at a time. So it'll be an else if they match doctor, right? If they clicked on the doctor column, then I'll order by, of course, separately, we have to do last name and first name. Okay, we can't use summary properties because this is preparing the query to go to the database. The database knows nothing about summary properties. Right. The else is, of course, if we're descending, then we just do the order by descending, then by descending. All right. Now, this last one, notice is not an else if because it's the default. So if it wasn't age or doctor, then we're sorting by patient name. And it will just use whatever the last direction uh, or the direction is supposed to be. It might have been switched. If they click the patient column again, then it'll just sweat to descending and so on. So just ordering by the first and last name and away we go. All right. Now, you know, you can always add additional then buys in here as well. So you might say, even if I'm switching, you know, from first to last name, maybe a whole bunch of people have the same name, right? And then I want it sorted by something else. We well, can just throw that in here as well. And that's it. So now it's almost ready. The only thing is, last critical step, remember we have to supply values to go into those hidden inputs. So in view data, we'll just throw in our current sort field and sort direction. And that's all we have to do. Now we have a fully functioning uh, filter and sorting working together. Let's just see how that goes. I'll just save everything. We'll come back here, refresh the page again. Oh, I didn't change the look of the medical trial. Oh, let me just fix that before I do that. So let me come back to the index. Okay, yeah, I left it as this display name. So it's going to be just like this for now. I'm not going to try to sort by the uh, uh, in trial, right? What's the caption I have here? Med trial. Okay, so I'll use the same one. There we go. Just save that. Come back and refresh once more. All right, now they look pretty consistent, but you see I can click on doctor, sort alphabetically by the doctor's name, sort by age, sort by the patient, okay? And then I can also apply a filter. So I've <laughs> got to be careful that I don't lose too much. Uh, if I filter for, with the letter F, Right. Then I can still sort here by age. See, so I have, you know, going from youngest to oldest or oldest down to youngest. Right. And the neat thing is it will keep that even if I clear the filter. Notice it's st still going from oldest to youngest. Right. Uh, I can change all these independently. And uh, let's see the letter E. Everybody has a letter E, <laughs> but we are applying a filter and our. Uh, our sorting still works fully independently and doesn't destroy the filter, right? Notice up here, everything is up here as query string parameters for both our sort and our filter, and that's why it works. And the other neat thing is if I go, say, off to the details page, all right, no problem. Now, if I click back to list, then I'll just get 
a fresh copy of the page. If I use the back button, notice that it still keeps all the sort and filter and away we go, right? Uh, that's pretty important, especially with progressive web apps, because, you know, if people only ever clicked on the links we supplied, that would be one thing. But if they click edit and instead of clicking back to list, right, if they do, then, of course, they come back with no filter. But if they use the back button to get back here, right, then we have all of these query string parameters maintained for our for sort and our filter. And you can even bookmark these links, right? So if you always wanted to open the page, for example, and uh, have it come to where you're going to uh, have your favorite filter and sorting in place, then it's all available right here. And that's basically it. I'll maybe just show you quickly the difference. If I come back into Visual Studio, if I come to the top of the page and take out that method as get, right? Which means the default will be, oh, I'll even put it here for clarity, post. Oh. Okay, so I'll clear, right? So now we have no filter. Now when I do a filter, notice nothing shows up up here, right? It's posting back and forth. I can still sort by doctor and age. I'm still fully functional in that the filter doesn't affect the sort and the sort doesn't affect the filter. But let's watch what happens here. If I click edit and then use the back button. Ah, see, because form parameters were being submitted. Okay, it says we have to refresh and say, yes, go ahead and resubmit, right? So that's not very ideal. It's nice that it's clean up here. We don't see all that. Right. But on the other hand, it's not nice because we actually have to get prompted to refresh sometimes. So that's why I will normally in future just be leaving this as a get. OK. And that's basically it. So just to summarize here back in Blackboard, I made a note here that the tutorial brings up this point that the W3C guidelines recommend using get if the action doesn't result in an update. So to be compliant with that, that's why we're going to go with this method equals get. Even though it looks cluttery up in the address bar, uh, it's probably the better way to go. So, and it's more consistent with the tutorial as well. All right, so that's it. There, now you know how to do filtering and sorting.